you can have a conversation on the phone with someone from a label and everything can be everything can be good and then the piece of paper that they give you can mean something completely different so <laughs> get a lawyer <laughs> So would you say one of your main sources of sales is YouTube? Oh, hands down. YouTube is my number one source of traffic. So how over the last, I guess, only four years did you build up such a, a loyal subscriber base that eventually morphed into a, a customer base? Honestly, just being consistent, putting out a couple beats a week or at least at the least one beat a week and doing that for four years, you know, um, I think that I have enough of an original sound where people keep coming back to me people keep watching me like not every beat is amazing not every beat is going to be everyone's favorite but i have that consistent original sound that people seem to um gravitate back to you may have already answered this question but but what is one action if you had to pick that you took that you can definitively say helped increase your beat sales I would say polishing up my uh, my overall sound and trying to stop trying to compete with people that I don't compete with. Just you know, focus on which beats kind of do the best numbers and which pe which type of beats people like the most. And then I would just do what I do in that area. Like I, if I don't really make really good like trippy red type beats, I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna try to compete with that. I'm just going to I'm just going to stick to what I'm good at. Drake type beats, Post Malone type beats, kind of stay in the style that I'm doing and and give the people what they like in the first place. Don't try to don't try to do too much cuz I know everyone's like, "Oh, you should be doing you should be doing every type beat. You should be doing to hit all the target audiences." But I kind of just try to focus on the ones that people react to. Dream Life says that that same thing. Uh, and he's obviously quite good at at the boom bap and classic right hip-hop beats uh and he says that that's what works and he encourages other producers to, to do the same so now that this is two top sellers that i'm hearing that from so whoever right. whoever's watching this you know <laughs> maybe this is an important uh bit yeah. of advice you're making a good income off selling beats online the, the first time a major label approached you to buy a beat you weren't really happy with the terms right no not at all so I know one of the, the things you didn't like about the major label producer agreements was the whole work for hire element, right? Correct. So, and just, you know, for people watching who don't know that work for hire is a, a legal term that basically means any producer selling a beat under work for hire is also selling the copyright to that beat. Another way to say that is when you sell a beat that's work for hire, you're, you're selling your masters. And of course, work for hire contracts often pay five figures, so it's kind of a, a trade-off. Maybe it's, maybe it's more than five figures. Uh, but there are, are a lot of producers making good money leasing beats on the internet, and you don't sign a work for hire contract when when you sell no. a beat. No, yeah, like a lot of it is just the language that they use, and that's something that I didn't know getting into it. I I used the entertainment lawyer for the first time, the which you recommended me. Thank you. No, for helping yeah, no me problem. Out. Man. That's what I just tell everybody now. I'm like, if you're gonna do any kind of major um, deal, just get an entertainment lawyer. It's worth it. I was lucky enough to have them explain things to me and, and teach me so that now I know going into deals in the future, I know things to talk about beforehand because you can have a conversation on the phone with someone from a label and everything can be, everything can be good. And then the piece of paper that they give you can mean something completely different. So <laughs> get a lawyer. <laughs> Definitely been in that position. So because there are so many producers now making good money, leasing beats on the internet and they're not dealing with selling their masters or their copyrights, do you think labels will eventually start changing their practices so far as copyright and master ownership goes just because of now the internet being such a dominant it's kind of it's kind of where everyone's getting beats from now I think they're gonna have to eventually change um the way they do things because they're gonna they're gonna have to because it's just everything is starting to work differently um because labels are buying tight beats on the internet that are on youtube they're you know, you have to bring in, you have to bring different things into the conversation. You have to say, okay, are you going to make me remove my beat from YouTube? Are you going to whitelist it? Can I still make monetization revenue off the, um, off the YouTube video? There's different things that you have to talk about. I think that the labels are going to kind of start to change the way they do things because the way they're buying the beats is, is completely different. They're buying, they're buying, labels are buying exclusives to beats that hundreds of people have leased already. So how does that work? You know what I mean? There's there's so much gray area. And then not to mention the fact that 
if you're a, a, a top selling producer on the internet, you may have already made 10,000 off of a single beat. And you might right. be used to that number. So when the label comes and says, well, we're going to buy this for, for 5,000, right. you, don't, you don't need that, right? right. That, that you're exactly. not desperate. Exactly. So it, it's, giving, it's giving us type beat producers a lot more leverage in negotiation now. I'm not going to say who or what beat, but um, one of the labels that I'm dealing with, I told them um, that I wanted 10,000 for a beat. And they said, whoa, you know, like, we're not even, like, we're paying that for, like, some young thug be beats and stuff, you know? So these are huge artists that they're paying those prices for. And I said, well, I base my pricing off of what I've made off of leases already and what I can make off of leases in the future. So we have a lot more leverage in negotiation now. And, and don't sell yourself short and fall under pressure, you know? Like, know, know your worth and know the worth of the beat that you're selling. What's, what's new for Taylor King in, in 2018? Um, honestly, uh, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to focus and kind of recreate my sound. Um, a big thing for me right now is to, is to make producing less of a job and less of a, a, a formula that I'm following and, and kind of make it fun again. Um, and, and make it exciting again and do new things with sounds and, and kind of like, I just, I just want to focus on making good music that I like and, and 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 making it the best that it can be for everyone that wants to buy it. So in addition to the to you uploading more beats and and, and we might hear a, a an evolution of your sound. Does that mean that there's going to be a Taylor King album? <laughs> I would I would love to do something like that. Um, I'm working, you know, with a bunch of like close friends and and people who are making music. I'm helping. I'm wor I'm working. I'm experimenting in different genres. I'm helping my friend that makes you know rock. Um, and stuff like that. So I'm I'm kind of expanding um, my genre a little bit and and working with other people and kind of kind of just going back to the the basics and ma making everything exciting again, making music exciting again for me. Because I was getting bored. I was getting bored a lot, and it just kind of felt redundant. Like I was doing the same thing over and over again, making a beat, uploading it on YouTube. So I'm just gonna take a couple steps back and and kind of do what I want to do, focus on the content even more. And just you know, just try to make, try to make great work. Well, good man. Much much continued success to you. Uh, where can people find you? Um, TaylorKingBeats.com, um, YouTube. Just search Taylor King. Um, other than that, I think you can search me on BeatStars too at Taylor King. So um, at Taylor King on Twitter, Taylor is King on IG, so, and that's pretty much it.